all generations ago, the people didn't know how to make flutes. Drums, rattles, yes, but no flutes. In these long past days before the white man came with his horse and fire spear, a young hunter went out after game. Meat was scarce and the people in his village were hungry. He found the tracks of an elk and followed them for a long time. The elk was wise and swift. It's the animal that possesses the love charm. If a man has elk medicine, he will win the one he loves for his wife. He will also be a lucky hunter. Our poor young man had no elk medicine. After many hours he finally sighted his game. The young hunter had a fine new bow and a quiver made of otter skin, full of good straight arrows, tipped with points of obsidian, sharp, black and shiny like glass. The young man knew how to use his weapon. He was the best shot in the village, but the elk always managed to stay just out of range leading the hunter on and on. The young man was so intent to follow his prey that he hardly took notice of where he went. At dusk, the hunter found himself deep inside a dense forest of tall trees. The tracks had disappeared and so had the elk. The young man had to face the fact that he was lost, that it was now too dark to find his way out of the forest. There was not even a moon to show him the way. Luckily he found a stream with clear cold water to quench his thirst. Still more luckily his sister had given him a rawhide bag to take along, filled with washinape mikan, dried meat pounded together with berries and kidney fat, sweet, strong washna. A handful of it will keep a man going for a day or more. After the young man had drunk and eaten, he rolled himself into his fur robe propped his back against a tree and tried to get some rest. But he couldn't sleep. The forest was too full of strange noises. The iry cries of night animals, the howling of owls, the growling of the trees in the wind. He had heard all these sounds before, but now it seemed as if he were hearing them for the first time. Suddenly there was an entirely new sound the kind neither he nor any other man had experienced before. In a way it made him afraid, so he drew his rope tightly around him and reached for his bow to make sure that it was properly slow. On the other hand, this new sound was like a song, beautiful, beyond imagination, full of love, hope and yearning. And then, before he knew it, night more than half gone, he was suddenly asleep. He dreamt that a bird called Wanuka, the red-headed woodpecker, appeared to him, singing the strange, beautiful new song, saying, Follow me and I will teach you. When the young hunter awoke, the sun was already high, and on a branch of the tree against which he was leaning was a red-headed woodpecker. The bird flew away to another tree, and then to another, but never far, looking all the time over its shoulder at the young man, as if to say, come on. Then once more the hunter heard that wonderful song, and his heart yearned to find the singer. The bird flew toward the sound, leading the young man, its flaming red top flitting through the leaves, making it easy to follow. At last the bird alighted on a cedar tree, and began tapping and hammering on a dead branch, making a noise like a fast beating of a small drum. Suddenly there was a gust of wind, and again the hunter heard that beautiful sound, right close by and above him. Then he discovered that the song came from a dead branch, which the woodpecker was belaboring with his beak. He found moreover that it was the wind which made the sound, as it whistled through the holes the bird had drilled into the branch.
Carla, friend, said the hunter, let me take this branch home. You can make yourself another one. He took the branch, a hollow piece of wood, about the length of his forearm, and full of holes. The young man walked back to his village. He had no meat to bring to his tribe, but he was happy all the same. Back in his teepee, he tried to make the dead branch sing for him. He blew in it, he waved it around, but no sound came. It made the young man sad. He wanted so much to hear that wonderful sound. He purified himself in the sweat lodge and climbed to the top of a lonely hill. There, naked, resting, with his back against a large rock, he fasted for four days and four nights, crying for a dream, a vision to teach him how to make the brand sing. In the middle of the fourth night, Wanuka, the bird with the flaming red spot on his head, appeared to him, saying, Watch me! And in his vision, the young man watched very carefully. When he awoke, he found a cedar tree. He broke off a branch and worked on it for many hours, hollowed it out delicately with a bowstring drill, just as he had seen Wanuka do this in his vision. He riddled the branch into the shape of a bird with a long neck and an open beak. He painted the top of the bird's head red with Wahasha, the secret vermilion color. He prayed and smoked the brands with incense of burning sage and sweet grass. He fingered the holes, all the while blowing softly into the end of the flute. Because this is what he had made, the first flute, the first siotanka, and all at once there was the song, ghost-like and beautiful beyond words, and all the people were astonished and joyful. In the village lived an Itankan, a big and powerful chief. This Itankan had a daughter, who was beautiful, but also very haughty. Many young men had tried to win her love, but she had turned them all away. Thinking of her, the young man made up a special song, a song that would make this proud Vinshikala fall in love with him. Standing near a tall tree, a little away from the village, he blew his flute. All at once, the Vinshikala heard it. She was sitting in her father's tipi, feasting on much good meat. She wanted to remain sitting there, but her feet wanted to go outside. And her feet won. Her head said, go slow, slow. But her feet said, faster, faster. In no time at all, she stood next to the young man. Her mind ordered her lips to stay close but her heart commanded them to open. Her heart told her tongue to speak. Koshkalaka wastelake, she said. Young man, I like you. Then she said, let your parents send a gift to my father, no matter how small, it will be accepted. Let your father speak for you to my father, do it soon, right now. And so the old folks agreed according the wishes of their children and the chief's daughter became the young hunter's wife. All the other young men had heard and seen how it came about. Soon they too began to whittle cedar branches into the shapes of birds' heads, with long necks and open beaks, and the beautiful haunting sound of flutes traveled from tribe to tribe, until it filled the whole prairie. And that's how Shiotanka, the flute, came to be, thanks to the cedar, the woodpecker, the wind, and the young hunter who shot no elk, but he knew how to listen.
Bald eagle never fly, proud eagle never die. Proud eagle never fly, proud eagle never die. They build. Proud eagle 